פישוט מלא ורבותיי, עוד יד שובי שיעור, שבת שלום, אין דל שבוע טוב, בוקר ובהם, וואי, בגלל זה פרשה של זה שבוע, טוק אבות שבת, וזה פרשה של זה שבוע, אז וואל, טוק אבות שבת. אבל לפני שנתחיל לדבר על אבות שבת, let's talk a little bit about what the Bnei Israel did with the golden calf. I mean, there is no explanation how to understand such a thing. It's very, very hard to understand exactly how the Jews, after they've been slaves in Egypt, Hashem delivered them from Egypt. He showed them a lot of miracles. We have no idea, no idea how much Hashem protected them during 400 years in Egypt. They had not been assimilated. Hashem helped them. And the, the Egyptian, instead of killing them, finishing with them, They just build, they give, they give them to be slaves. And Hashem, all the time, He was giving His own protection above what we can imagine. Just think, when Pao, He's a, He's a, People told him, the Jews one day they're going to do a revolution, they're going to kill you, they're going to do disaster in Egypt. First thing that you should do, to throw them from Egypt, to kill them, to finish with them, to do like Haman wanted to do to the Jews. And Hashem, he put in his mind not to do that. Then, they crossed the sea. They saw miracles in the sea. Then they received the Torah. Something. And Hashem, He showed the Jews that He is the only one. He opened the sky. And He told them, look, I am the only God. There is no one with me. And they saw, they saw miracles. The man coming from the Shemaim. Can you imagine a few million Jews in the desert and uh, with no food supply and they had the man that he could test all kind of food in that and the, the man they had water they be protected from with, with the with the, the seven cloud I mean There is no ima imagination how Hashem was with them. And uh, Moshe Abinu, now we had to go to the Shamaim. Maybe you will ask me a question. Why Moshe Abinu needed to go to the Shamaim to bring the Torah from over there? Why Hashem, he will not teach him the Torah down here. I mean, every time Hashem, when he was, to talk, when he was, when he was talking to Moshe Abinu, Moshe Abinu, he didn't go to the Shammai, to the sky. No. Hashem, he gave a mitzvot to Moshe Abinu. Here, down here. So why Moshe Abinu, he needed to go up there? Well, the answer is that Hashem, He wanted to give the Torah. And the Torah, till then, the Torah was in the Shamaim. The Torah was not, because it's the Torah, it's very spiritual, the Torah. It's not something, it's a, it's a present that Hashem He gave to the Jews. So, Hashem He said, well, Moshe Rabbeinu had, he, he did to go up there and to bring it. 
So the question is, why Hashem, He will not give him, instead of going up, He should give him, hey, it's Moshe Abelou, I'm going to teach you the Torah, stay down, 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 down earth, you, did, you, you, did, you don't need to go to the Shammai, to the sky, to bring the Torah down. But Hashem, He loved so much the Jews, that Hashem, He wanted that the Jewish people to send to the Shamayim somebody to see what's going on there. And because the Jews, they trusted Moshe Rabbeinu so much, so they went, they told him, Moshe, go up there as Hashem you want and tell us what's going on there. And beside this, there was a big problem that the Malachim, the angels, they, for thousands of years, they were so happy to have the Torah up there. The Torah is the names of Hashem. It's the, it's the light. It's a, you have no imagination what it is Torah. And uh, it was very important that Moshe Rabbeinu he will seduce them that the Torah is not for them, that the Torah is for us. That way Hashem, he couldn't take the Torah from, from the Malachim. I mean, Hashem is God. Hashem is the king of the kings. Hashem is the boss. But don't forget that Hashem, he doesn't like to hurt people. The same way that he is, he doesn't like to hurt people, so he don't want to hurt the angels, the Malachim. He don't want to hurt them. So Hashem wanted that Moshe Rabbeinu, he had a conversation with them. That's why Hashem he wanted Moshe Rabbeinu to go up there. So Moshe Rabbeinu, when he went up there, of course Moshe Rabbeinu, he preferred not to go up there because uh, he was worried to have a fight with the angels. So the angels, they said to Hashem, what this man is doing here? So Hashem, he told them, this man, he came to receive the Torah. The Torah is the joy to live with happiness. I'm telling you, my friend, when I understand something in the Torah, for me, it's worth everything. Always I say, I have two wives. My first wife is the Torah. My second wife is my wife. I love both of them. I respect both of them. But when it comes to Torah, it's first. Because she is my first wife. And I promise you, you can look at me, I know what I'm telling you, when I study Torah, when I understand the Torah, there is nothing to compare Torah, money, and all things that you can imagine. The Torah is the best. When you love the Torah, she loves you. You, when, when you get married only to somebody that you love. If you love the Torah, so you marry the Torah, she will give you back her love. What she can give you back, that you will understand her. You will understand the Torah. And that gives you more satisfaction. So, my friend, the proof is, the proof is, David Amelar said, Ta'amu okit of Hashem, he give you an idea. If you want to know who is Hashem, test. Only through Torah you can test the Torah. What the Torah said, three times a day, and Shema Israel, Ve'avta et Hashem Elokecha. You must love Hashem with all your heart. I mean, to love somebody, that means that you know that somebody. You cannot, you cannot love somebody that, that you, don't, you don't know. And if you love somebody, that's, that means you are happy. So the happy came from love. I mean, 
when somebody he lived in peace with his wife so there is nothing there is nothing that he cannot can separate them the happiness came when you love somebody you're happy when you love Hashem so you're happy so my friend Hashem to give us the Torah the value the Torah has no value the Torah has no price David Amelech said Anehemadi mizahab un pazrav you can have the billions of diamonds but nothing to compare the Torah money can make you happy only for a while when you're when, you, when the person is not well the, the money is not value in his eyes the Torah yes the Torah even if you are ill even if the person is not well the love of the Torah has no has no price my friend Hashem, it was very important for him that Moshe Rabbeinu will go up to tell the Jews what it is, what's going on up there. And beside this, he had to fight the angels that they were the boss of the Torah up there. And now Moshe Rabbeinu is going to take it out from their hand to bring it down. It's not easy. But Moshe Rabbeinu was very clever. He had a good argument with the Malachim, with the help of Hashem. You know, my friend, Hashem, he could give the Malachim arguments, but uh, Hashem he preferred that Moshe will give the argument. Not Hashem, because, because the, the angels, they may say to Hashem, yes, you protect the Jews, uh, you always... Uh, Try to find answers for them. So Hashem said, okay. The one who's going to take the Torah for the Jews, for the men, he will answer you. So Hashem said to Moshe, Abir, Moshe, give them an answer. They ask, why you came here? So Moshe said, Hashem, I came to bring the Torah. He told me to take the Torah down, down earth. So the Malachim said to Moshe, Moshe, who are you? Why sh sh should, should we give you the Torah? We are here before you. We born before you. We are joined the light of the Torah. You want to take this light from us? So Moshe Abiru told them, you have, the, you have the light of Hashem. You live with Hashem. Why you need the Torah? So they said to Moshe Abiru, the Torah it's something that the light of the Torah, there is nothing to compare the light of the Torah. Of course, we are here with Hashem, what, but we need that as well, this extra light, we need it. We will join it. Moshe Abiru told him, tell me, do you eat? No. Do you get married? No. Do you divorce? No. Do you smoke? No. Do you have cigarettes? Do you smoke on Shabbat? No. Do you do brachot before eat? No, we don't eat. Do you drink? No. You have a wife? No. Do you have a bar mitzvah? No. Do you have brit milah? No. So he started. Do you keep Shabbat? What it, we don't know what it is Shabbat. So, this is the Torah. Do you have the Yitzhara? No. Do you have temptation to do bad things, to kill? No. So, Moshe Abel so why you need the Torah? Torah said, Lot ignore, don't steal, don't kill, don't be jealous, don't be arrogant, don't be sad, don't do that, don't do that. Put fill in. Do you put fill in? No. So why you do you want the Torah? We need the Torah because Hashem gave us mitzvot 
and Hashabi give us Hashabi give us we have the Yitzhara and this Yitzhara is the one to stop us from doing the mitzvot from loving Hashem can you stop loving Hashem? no so we can because of the Yitzhara so we need the light of the, of the Torah we need this Torah to come down we need it otherwise we will be Rishayim and if there is no Torah down there so why Hashem he created the world? He created the world just for fun? Just for the animals? No. So we need the Torah to be human beings, good people, serving Hashem, fighting the Sarah that he doesn't want us to do Torah and mitzvot. The Ma'achim, when they heard this, so they said to Hashem, Hashem is right. Give them the Torah. Because if, if there is no Torah, there is no word. So even us were in danger. Because the, Torah, the word cannot resist without the Torah. If there is, Through the word stand with Torah, mitzvot, gimilut hasadim, and pray, tefillah, Avodat Hashem, to serve Hashem, to know the, the laws of Hashem. So they said to Hashem, Hashem is right. So my friend, you understand? So you know what happened that, that, that moment? Moshe Rabbeinu, he become a superstar in the Shamaim. So all the angels, they started to teach, to teach him Torah. To teach him the secrets of Torah. Even the, de the, the angel of, of death, the Malach Hamavit, he teach him if there is a pandemic, God forbid, how to stop it. Usually you know that the angel of, of death, he wants to kill people. And now he gives to Moshe Rabbeinu the secret how to stop him from, from killing people. How can he do that? His enjoyment is to kill people, the angel of death. And here, he gives to Moshe Rabbeinu the antivirus, the, 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 anti the, uh, the anti-pandemic. He, he teaches him the, what to do. Because even the angel of death, he understood that without Torah, the world is in danger. Even himself is in danger. So at least let's give him a secret how to stop the pandemic. So at least he will remain alive. Angel of death. Can you imagine this? So now my friend, that's why Moshe Rabbeinu went up. And in the, mean, in the meantime, when Moshe Rabbeinu was learning the Torah of Hashem, and with the Malachim, something disastrous happened in, the, in earth. Moshe Rabbeinu told them, after, 40, after, after 40, 40 days, I will come with the Torah. And uh, they did not count well. And suddenly they, they decided to do Avod Azara. It's incredible. How can they do that? It's like you, you exchange a Rolls Royce against a bicycle. They exchange Hashem against the golden calf. How can how can how can that could happen? Moshe Rabbeinu went to bring the Torah from Shamayim to Earth and to fight the angels that they will not take it back. Never they will. Take, they will take it back. Because once they accepted that the Torah should be in the hand of the Jews, they cannot take it back anymore. So my friend, I don't understand. So okay, Moshe Abinu, it didn't come after 40 days. 
May you want to stay another week, so what? What the problem? What the problem? Maybe, okay, what shall I be told after 40 days? I come. You know what they said? Vayara am ki boshesh moshe. Boshesh is the gematria of basheker, lies. Vayara am ki boshesh moshe. They started to say, Moshe is a liar. Boshesh Moshe is a liar. Boshe, if you can, if you get calculation of Boshesh, is the gematria of Basheker. Basheker that means lie. Bayar Aham, when the nation saw that Moshe, that Moshe, he didn't come. So they started to say, Moshe is a liar. And we said that Moshe Emet, the Torah to Emet, so Moshe is a liar. Moshe is not Emet. So he told it's not Emet. He told us 40 days and he didn't come. And at that moment, what happened? You know, the Etzara is very strong. The Etzara, if you open a small door, it's finished. He will swallow you. Always you have to be, you have to be careful. It's like, uh, God forbid, if you, if you leave a candle next to the curtain and it's windy, if you leave it in one second, you could have all your house on fire. That's Sarah, you have to be very, very careful with him. You should not open the door. You open, you open, just, you do something wrong. A little bit, you start with something not kosher, then you fill his hand. And because they said Moshe is not Emet, Moshe is a liar, so, they Sarah, he put their mind, let's do a good, a good, a good, good encore. So my question is, why, why did he, why did he not create a man? Why did he create a golden calf? Why not a man? A man that can talk to them, like Moshe. I mean, uh, they said Moshe is a liar. Moshe is not here. Is he died? Okay, like. They thought that he, he died in the Shamayim, like Yonatan Ben Ozeel explained that they saw, they saw him going into the fire on the mountain of Sinai. So they said maybe he died. So now that he died, we need a, we need a, a leader. Okay. There is a Aaron, there is Hur, there is Nadabadiu, there is Yushua. Why to create? A golden cup, something, uh, something uh, not uh, normal, something uh, not natural. Why, why? So, two questions. Why they created a golden cup? And the other hand, why not a man f with God? Or why not to choose uh, somebody that is alive? A man. A real leader. Human being, like Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, El Azar, Etamar, Yeshua. Who? There is a lot of tzaddikim at that time. My friends, those people, they didn't want a man. They wanted a golden calf. They wanted something that they create, that they can't tell him what to do. Usually, it's Hashem who gives orders. It's Moshe who gives orders to the Bnei side. Those people, the Jews, they wanted to create something belong to them. And, uh, and, to, and uh, that he should, whatever they want, he will, be, he will agree with them. And that's why they created a golden cup. 
a small baby, a egg. A egg is nothing. You know, a baby, whatever you tell him, he, he say yes. So they wanted a baby. They didn't know what a, a cow or a man, because uh, whatever you tell him, he would, maybe he would not. He would not accept what you ask him. He wanted something, a baby, a, a baby calf, a golden baby calf. So whatever they will ask him to do, he will say yeah. He will. He will just follow them. Have you, my friend? Do you understand how they came to that situation? My friend, I have no answer for that question. I have no answer. And there is no answer. Can you imagine those people? They saw millions of miracles. They, they've been, and just in the morning, they had a breakfast. The man who came, the man from the Shamaim, and they did a, good, a golden calf. They killed whole. They wanted to kill a harom just for the pleasure. They want to be, they want to decide their life. They want a golden calf. That's whatever, whatever they will ask him to do, he will, he will do. Usually, we don't ask Hashem. Hashem, this is the kind of laws that we want now. Hashem is the boss. Hashem, he said, this is the law that I give you to do. And when we do what Hashem he asks us to do, so whatever we ask from Hashem, Hashem he does. But you cannot always, you cannot ask to Hashem, this is the kind of laws that we want. No. The world was created for the laws that Hashem he will give to the Jews, not the Jews to decide what kind of laws they want. No. My friend, how they came to be like that? My friend, the Jews, the condition to leave Egypt was only that they will respect Torah and Mitzvot. Now, this is this kind of revolution? Why Moshe Abel was up there to bring the Torah down here? He went to fight the angels and he warned them and he beat them and and you know that, and, and that moment what happened at that moment as she was giving to Moshe Abinu the mitzvah of to respect Shabbos look what happened you know what happened Hashem said to, the, to Moshe Moshe go down the Jews did the God, a golden calf. And they said, this is your God. And Hashem was very, 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 very angry. He wanted to kill the whole Jews. So Moshe started to pray for them. I mean, we're lucky that Hashem didn't kill us. He didn't finish with the Jews and destroy the world. That's it. Why he didn't do it? Because it was Moshe Rabbeinu, alive. Who was a tzaddik? There were few tzaddikim. Because of, so that's what Hashem said to Moshe, Moshe, let me kill the whole Jews, and only the tzaddikim, they were a man alive. So Moshe said to Hashem, Hashem, no. Or kill us, all of us, or forgive us. My friend, I have no answer how the Jews did that. One thing, my friend, I have to tell you. We can do all kind of bad things if there is no Torah. Only Torah can protect. You know, you know, my friend, Hashem, He said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, 
de dix pipe de dezer def. Pate ui nos pëllish dem. A ui pëllish dem, e ui tajm da den o god, a ui pëllish dem, o de god du kam. Bat roshe, da oli ui, dat di kan repeer, The sin of the golden calf, Shabbat. Shabbat. Why Shabbat? Because Shabbat is emona. All week I work hard. Shabbat I don't work. Shabbat I believe in Hashem. That you will give me my parnasa. On Shabbat, I don't work because Hashem created six days the work, and the, the, on Shabbat, the seven days, Hashem he didn't create nothing. And Hashem he said, the same way that this day I did not create nothing, so you as well, there is no creation. You will not create nothing. You don't work, you just rest. When we rest Shabbat, we repair the sin of the golden calf. Because the Jews, they be, when, they, when the Somoshi didn't come, so they created a kind of idolatry. So the only way that to show that you don't believe in this kind of idolatry, only when you respect Shabbat. And Shabbat is the day of Shalom. To travel, Shabbat Shalom. So Shabbat we do Shalom with Hashem. Hashem forgive us for what we did. And that's why the parasha of this week, Vayakhel, the first thing that Moshe Abinu, when he came from the Shamayim, the third time, because don't forget, Moshe Abinu, he went three times to the Shamayim and he stayed there 40 days. The first time when he went to bring the Torah, he came day, down on the 17th of Tammuz and he saw that he did a golden calf. So, this, so the second time he, he went again two days after and he remained in Shamayim 40 days again to pray that Hashem will forgive the sin that the Jews did for the golden cup. Because it was terrible, terrible, terrible. And then Hashem told him, okay, now you have to go down and come up again for another 40 days on the month of Elul, Rosh Chodesh Elul, till Yom Kippur, 40 days. So I will give you the new Ten Commandments. But the first one, the first tables, you broke them. So now I have to give you the new ones. And then Moshe Abinui came the first time with the Ten Commandment after Kippur. And the big time, the, the Jews did, did a big Tishuvah. And now Hashem he said to Moshe Abinu, let's do a, let's do a, Temple, tabernacle. Do me a tabernacle so I can live with the Jews. Now I cannot be without them. Hashem, He renewed His love to the Bnei Israel. But now Moshe Rabbeinu, by He called the whole Jews, children, women, men, everybody, to tell them about the good news. Hashem, now He wants us to build Him a house, the Mishkan. But instead of talking to them about the Mishkan, He started to talk to them, to them about Shabbos, to keep Shabbat. Why He started to talk to them to keep Shabbat? Because that Moshe told them, 
if if you create if if you build to Hashem a nice synagogue, a nice temple, if you, you don't respect Shabbat, it's like you did nothing. And he told him, now Hashem wants to live with, with us. He wants us to, to create, to build him a house, a Mishkan, a Bet HaMikdash. But not on Shabbat. On Shabbat, we don't. Can you imagine if in the house of Hashem, we are not allowed to build it in, a, in, a, in Shabbat. That means Shabbat is Shabbat. Hashem wanted to teach us that the only way to be connected to Hashem with big Imunah on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, only through Shabbos. So the good Shabbos, only, not only good between us, between me and you, but between me and Hashem. So we have peace. That peace to remind us what we did, the good Nukaf that we did. So on Shabbat we, we, we have Emunah on Shabbat and the Shabbat is happiness, it's a joy. And this, my friend, you have, to, you have to know that I know on Shabbat we have to spend money. When we do Chagim, or Shana Kippur, there is a, a lot of uh, money, uh, it's very expensive. Shabbat every week, uh, you know, we... We spend a lot of money, but we have to have, we must have imuna that whatever we spend for, for Hashem, it's a baracha. Hashem will give you back. This is our imuna. The only way that Hashem will not be punished, only through imuna on Shabbat. There is a, the Gemara said, what the idea to be protected and, and, the, and especially today there is a, a lot of uh, problems between Russia and the Ukraine and the America and Europe, Russia. Instead today we are, we are living uh, the, the Third World War. And the news of today, already Putin, he's already, he, he took in his hand, you know, the famous telephone in case if there is a nuclear war. Can you imagine? That means, good for me, today we are in a in a very, very bad situation today. So how can we, we be protected? So the Gemara said, Bikitisa, the Mak Tarum Kanam Shil Israel Bikitisa. When we do Tzedakah, the parasha of, of last week, is Kitisa, the parasha of Tzedakah, to give uh, Tzedakah Mahzit shekel. That was for the expense of the vitamin. Even Hashem, he asked, Hashem, he can provide money. I mean, everybody can provide money for the expense to, to, to pay all the expense of the vitamin. But Hashem, he said, no. Hashem, he said, I want every Jew to bring half shekel. It's a small money. But few million Jews, there is rich people, there is poor people, all of them, they are partners for the Mishkan. It's, it's very important for Hashem that when the Jews are united, happy together, like the Rabbi said, I bring half, you bring half. So we are together, you are not alone anymore. I'm with you. Everyone, he should not feel easy alone. So we are all united. Half, half, half for you, half for me. Half shekel me, half shekel you, it's one. The Midrash said that when Hashem he said to Moshe Rabbeinu, every Jew, Jew should bring half shekel, Moshe Rabbeinu could not understand what it is half shekel. So Hashem took a shekel 
it with, with fire, he said, Moshe, like that, you should wing me. That means I want help from this one, I want help from this one. When they are together, they are, it's fire, it's love. And the most important is not how much you give. Sometimes people can give a million dollars and they are not happy. And they don't give it, they just give it for fun. But I want to teach you, if you even if you give half shekel, a peso, half peso, but do it good. Do it with a good heart. Can you imagine, my friend? The Beit HaMikdash, Hashem, you want that all Jews to be united, to, to build it. And every year, all the expenses that they spend for to maintain the maintenance of the Mishkan, of the Beit HaMikdash, it's with the half shekel that every Jew give. So that means we are all together with Hashem. United with the Torah, with Hashem. And Baruch Hashem, we have Shabbat. We have Shabbat, we are in synagogue. We pray to Hashem. On Shabbat, we feel even the children, the food. Everything on Shabbat has a test. It's beautiful. Beautiful. On Shabbat we are happy. This is happiness. Joy to live. Hashem give us Shabbos. And uh, after Shabbat, we have to carry on always the same. That when my grandfather, Rabbi Chaim Pito Araba Shalom, every Friday, he used to collect money and food for the poor people that they can feel happy. On Shabbat. He used to go from house to house to collect food. My friend, Shabbat is the only way to repair the golden cup, the sin of the golden cup. This is the only way. Shabbat. When we did the golden calf, so God forbid, it's like we change Hashem for, for idolatry. We don't understand what happened to them. We have no... I mean, that's why for Hashem to just have to kill them. But Hashem couldn't kill them because Moshe said to Hashem, Hashem, if you kill them, it's no good. So Moshe, Hashem said to Moshe, Moshe, I will, you will be the only one to remain alive with some people. So Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem, Hashem, no, because the Torah is in my hand, and I am the boss of the Torah, and the Torah you give me the Torah for the Jews. So if you, you kill the Jews, this Torah, I'm going to give it to whom? To whom? So kill me as well. Moshe Rabbeinu had an argument. He said to Hashem, Hashem, understand me. You told me that the Jews, I am shakul keneget kol Israel. I mean, if you take the whole Jews in one balance, and me the other balance, we are equal. So if you are equal, if you kill them, if you kill them, what about me? You have to kill me as well. Because I live for them, and they live for me. And Hashem, beside this, you told me, Lech Red, Moshe, all the cover that give you it for the Jews. Now there is no Jew, that the Jew did what they did, so get out from here. Okay? If I, I get out from here, where you, where you want me to go? I have nowhere to go. My way is the Jews. And for them, they are for me. And besides, Hashem 
who in his soul that Moshe Rabbeinu, how much he loved the Jews, he said, I'm okay. I will not kill them. I will let them alive. But they deserve a big punishment. So I will not punish them right now. Every generation I will punish them a little bit. But if they respect Shabbat, they will not be punished. I think this is how I understand. Because before the Jews did the golden calf, at that moment Hashem was teaching the laws of Shabbat to Moshe Abeno. Then he told him, Moshe, the Jews they did the, the golden calf. And beside this, when Moshe he wanted now to give the good news to the Jews that Hashem forgive them and now and he is the new Torah and now he wants us to build a house for him he started to tell them about Shabbat that means that the only way to correct to repair the the golden calf it's Shabbat. It's like a sandwich. The Torah talk about Shabbat before the golden cup, and then they did the golden cup, and now we talk about Shabbat again. And the golden cup is in the middle. That means that they put Shabbat and Shabbat, and the golden cup in the middle, they put it like a sandwich, and we don't see anymore the golden cup we see only the Shabbat. When there is Shabbat, before and after, the golden cup it doesn't exist anymore. There is a big tzaddik, Baba Sali, alayhi wa shalom. He said on the parasha of yesterday, he said, Kitisa. What the meaning of Kitisa? Kitisa, that means, the normal way how to explain the parish of last week, Kitisa, if we want to count the Jews, each Jew, we are not allowed to count the Jews one, two, three, four, five, six. We have to count the Jews uh, with uh, a coin. If we want to bring half shekel, and then we count them to know how many Jews there is. So we don't put a Mara. And Baba Sali said, Ki tisa, tisa, tav shin alef. Tav shin alef, tisa, is the, is the Rashi Tevos, the first letters is, tisa, tav is tishmor, shin shabbat, alef ahad. Tishmor shabbat ahad. If, if you want to have success, and Hashem will protect you, you have to keep only one Shabbat. You keep one Shabbat, Mashiach can come. <clears throat> can you imagine this? So now, my question, why Baba Sari, Arab Shalom, he put this Gematria, this Rashi Tevot, Tishmo Shabbat Ehad, before we talk about the Golden Cup. Well, the answer is, as I told you, the only way to repair the sin of the golden calf is by emunah of Shabbat. On Shabbat, when you respect Shabbat, you declare that God is emet, that Hashem emet, Moshe emet, Torah to emet, and Hashem created the world on six days and he is, and he is on Shabbat. This is my friend, the beautiful show of this week. May I should give you a Chabad Slaha. And now, my friend, we are, Vauk uh, Hashem, we went to Rabbi Meir Baranes. And uh, with the Zichut of the Tzaddik, Rabbi Meir Baranes, may I call Shvauk give you. Bracha v'etzlacha, b'yut k'neratzon. We 
we decided to come to pray in this tzaddik because of the, this bad situation that there is this week with Ukraine. So we pray to Hashem for Clemens. And you know last week, the day that we went to Rabbi Vivalanes, twice it happened in, in, in the Keneret, in Tiberia, earthquake. Incredible. That night that we went to Rabbi Mivalanes, I don't know what it is, the message. I don't know. At least Baruch Hashem, we were there with a big group to pray, and we did the shofar, so that Hashem will protect us. And then, we From Rabbi Mivalanes, we went to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and uh, we need to pray that with the zikhut of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and Rabbi Azar, Rabbi Tzhak Napaha, Rabbi Mivalanes, and all tzaddikim that they are buried in Miron, Tiberia. Akash Vok, we give you happiness, bracha, v'etzlacha, and bri'ud. Consider yourself now like if you are Rabbi Mevalanes and Rabbi Shemoy Ahai. And the Azat Hashem, with the Zichut, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we give you Bracha V'Etzlacha. My friend, you should know that only with the Zichut of Tzadikim that we can see Mashiach coming, the Azat Hashem. Don't forget one thing, and I would like to tell you this. That Rabbi Mevalanes, as I told you once, He's not buried lying in the floor. He's buried standing up. It's incredible. He's up, standing up. And they said that he's standing in front. In front of him, it's uh, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan. And from there, Mashiach will come to deliver us. So maybe the, the one who, who, who will welcome Mashiach or Elia Nabi will be Rabbi Mevalanes. May Hashem protect you. May Hashem give you Barakha Amen.